Hello class! So this lesson is 5.4 Efficiency, Energy Sources, and en Energy Conservation. So we've got a few topics in this one here. Um, the first one is efficiency. So you've, you're probably familiar with the term of efficiency. You want something to be efficient. Now efficient, efficiency is the ratio of useful energy out to the energy in. So when you're running some system, the amount of energy that you get out that's useful, it's going to be less than the amount of energy you need to put in. So this is our efficiency. The equation is efficiency, and we just write EFF for efficiency. Efficiency is equal to E out over E in times 100%. Okay, so the energy out over the energy in times 100%. And it has no units. It's just a percentage. Okay, and it's, it's fairly easy to work with, so we're going to see a few problems here. The first one it is about a firefly. It says a firefly's body transforms chemical energy in food into radiant energy to glow. What is a firefly's efficiency if its body transforms 4.13 joules of chemical energy into 3.63 joules of radiant energy? So we're getting our useful energy out is 3.63 joules of radiant energy. Our efficiency is equal to the energy out over energy in times 100%. So our output energy was 3.63 joules. Our input was 4.13. We multiply that by 100%, and it gives us an efficiency of 88%. That's how it works. We'll try another one here. It says, what is the efficiency of a rope and pulley system if a painter uses 1.93 kilojoules of mechanical energy to pull, the, pull on the rope and lift a 20 kilogram paint barrel at a constant speed to a height of seven and a half meters above the ground. Okay, so what's going on here? He's lifting a paint barrel some distance, seven and a half meters above the ground. So we need to figure out the energy out. We're given the energy in. This is how much input he's giving. We need to figure out how much energy out we're getting. So he's lifting this paint barrel. It's going from, some, from the ground up seven and a half meters. Well, what energy is it gaining here? It's gaining gravitational energy as it's being rised, uh, risen. So E out is our gravitational energy, Eg, which is equal to MGH. Our mass was 20 kilograms. G is 9.8, and H is 7.5 meters. This gives us 1470 joules, which I can write as 1.47 kilojoules. My efficiency is E out over E in times 100%. My energy out was 1.47 kilojoules. My energy in was 1.93. And this gives me 76.2%. That's my efficiency. That's how it works. So we can calculate efficiency. We can use it to solve problems. But it's also useful to talk about it in a more general term. When we have electronic appliances, we want them to be efficient. If you um, ever notice that your laptop is heating up, you might notice it's producing a lot of heat, the, f the fan is getting fast. That means that it's wasting a lot of energy to heat things up. Now, obviously, that's not deliberate, but when it's getting hot, that means that some of that energy is going towards thermal energy. 
it means that the laptop is not being as efficient as it could be, and it means that your battery will drain faster. So obviously we want things to be as efficient as they can be. This, is, this table here compares uh, a whole bunch of different devices or processes, and we can look at the transformation of energy, and we can see how efficient these transformations are. So bear with me, there's going to be a bit of writing on this one, but I think there's some interesting stuff. So the first one here, we're, we're comparing three different vehicles. A gas-powered vehicle, like a regular car, we're converting chemical energy in the fuel into kinetic energy so that we can move, so that the car moves. So we're converting chemical into electric, or into kinetic, sorry. And here, waste energy. This is, where is most of our energy being lost to? The, the non-useful energy. Because remember, we can't just destroy energy. If something's only 80% efficient, that means 20% of that energy is going to some other type of energy. In this case, it's thermal. So when we use a gas-powered car, it's producing a lot of extra heat that we don't need, because that's how it works. It, it burns the, the fuel. And so all that extra heat is being wasted. And the efficiency, the amount of energy we get out of our, our gas, is only about 8 to 15 percent. It's very inefficient, burning gas like that. Now, electric vehicles, we have a battery inside the car instead. And this is going to be converting electric, electrical energy, again into kinetic, because we're, we're still trying to move. The car is trying to move. Again, our main energy loss is thermal. Heat is being produced. But it's a lot more efficient. We get about 24 to 45 percent efficiency out of electric powered vehicles. Now, our bicycle. Think about a bicycle. There's no battery, there's no gas going on. This is just a person pushing the pedals. So we're actually taking the kinetic energy of pushing the pedals and we're converting it into a different type of kinetic energy. Right? Turning the pedals is this circular motion, and we want to turn that instead into a horizontal motion. But it's still, it's kinetic being converted back into kinetic. We still have some thermal loss. That's still our main um, type of waste energy. Heat is being produced in that whole process. The, the bike chain is going to get a bit hot, that sort of thing. And our efficiency here, 90%. Way more efficient than actually any other um, mode of transport. Bicycles are super duper efficient. Great. So those are three different types of, um, of transportation. We'll look at a couple different objects here now. Um, speakers. We're converting electrical energy into sound. Again, our main loss is thermal. You'll notice a pattern here. Pretty much all of these are going to have a loss of thermal energy. Our efficiency? 1%. Speakers are very inefficient. That's because sound is not a very efficient form of energy. It's very difficult to produce sound. Okay. Electric heaters. So again, we're taking electricity, and we're converting that into now thermal energy. And this is interesting, because on all these other ones, we've said that thermal was a waste energy. We didn't want thermal energy. This time, we do want thermal. So it's not our waste. Now the main waste energy for a heater is radiant, radiant energy. So your heaters will actually, if you look at an electric heater, they'll sort of turn red when they're getting really hot. They'll emit some light. And even if you can't see the light, sometimes there's infrared light being emitted by these uh, heaters. Okay. That's our waste energy. Now, efficiency, 98%. And that's because thermal energy is very easy to produce. Okay, so we get a very, very efficient uh, conversion out of there. All right, we've got a few more here. So the first one says um, hydroelectric power plant. And we've got nuclear power plant. So this is two different uh, sources of energy. Actually, I guess the solar cell is also a type of energy. So um, we, can, we can combine all three of those here. We've got nuclear, so hydroelectric, nuclear, and solar. 
So hydroelectric, this is um, from water. It's from running water, and Ontario gets a lot of its energy this way. Well, um, when there's a waterfall or when there's a, a dam, we have the water running through turbines. It spins the turbines, and we get energy out of there. So it's kinetic energy. It's the movement of this water spinning a turbine and converting it into electrical energy. Again, our main loss here is thermal. And our efficiency for these is 80%. Nuclear. Well, here we're taking nuclear energy. So this is between the protons and neutrons, that sort of thing. And we're converting that into electric. Main loss is thermal. And these are about 30 to 40% efficient. So it's a lot less than hydroelectric, but there's a lot more energy in nuclear energy to harness. So um, nuclear power plants still give us a lot of useful energy. They just don't capture as much of the input as hydro does, but there's a lot more input energy to work with. Okay, so we had hydro, nuclear, and solar. This is from the sun, solar energy. So we're taking radiant energy from the sun converting that into electric. Again, our main loss is thermal. And this is efficient about 20 to 40 percent. Not bad. Okay, we'll just finish up this table here. Photosynthesis, we mentioned already in the last lesson as an example. We're taking radiant energy, converting it into chemical. The main loss of energy is thermal, and it's 5% efficient. Not very efficient at all. But it's still where all of our energy is coming from on Earth. So finally, animal muscles here. Chemical into kinetic energy. Main loss is thermal. So our muscles are about 20% efficient at converting our, our chemical energy, our, our stored energy from food, into movement. All right, there you go. So again, this stuff you don't need to memorize, but it's important to, to see some of these patterns, like thermal energy being always this, this waste energy, and some idea about how efficiency sort of changes with these different materials. All right, our very last table here is about different sources of energy. And you've probably seen this sort of comparison before. We have renewable resources and non-renewable resources. So I'm going to list some uh, renewable resources first. So we've got here solar, hydro, geothermal, wind, tidal, biofuels, Oop, biofuels, so these are all different types of renewable resources. And the pros of renewable resources, well, right in the name, they are renewable. which means that they don't run out. So this is one of the big advantages. When I say a pro, that's an advantage of, of that thing. So one of the advantages of using renewable resources is that they're renewable. They don't run out. Also, they're usually better for the environment. So um, those are some of the advantages of renewable resources. Um, we can also say that they often use energy that is otherwise unused. For instance, wind energy. The wind is there whether or not we put up turbines. 
So when we put up turbines, we're just getting free energy out of that. We don't have to do anything extra. So that's one of the nice things about renewable resources. But if we talk about cons, the, the disadvantages, well, usually our renewable resources are not, um, not very efficient. That's not always true, but that's often true for these, non or for these renewable resources. Not very efficient. Okay, they can be expensive to build. And um, what else? They can also be, um, they can often disrupt nature or wildlife. For instance, hydroelectric energy usually involves putting up dams in rivers and that sort of thing. And that can really affect the natural wildlife in the water. It can um, really disturb them. So those are some, some negative aspects of renewable resources. For non-renewable resources, well, we have two big ones. These are fossil fuels. and nuclear energy. And actually I'm going to separate these here because they're they're very different. I'm going to put a little line here. We've got fossil fuels and we've got nuclear. So fossil fuels when we talk about that we're, we're talking about like gasoline, oil, these sorts of things. Usually we're burning them. Okay, so what are the good things about fossil fuels? Well, they have lots of energy. And it's very easy to convert it. And how do we do that? Well, we just light it on fire. When you have a bunch of oil, you light it on fire, and it gives us a whole bunch of energy. So it's easy to convert it. But the disadvantage is, of course, well, the resource is limited, and it's very bad for the environment. Okay, and the last one here, nuclear energy, well, has even more energy than fossil fuels. Nuclear gives loads of energy. And it's relatively clean. Which means that there's not much waste. So those are the pros for nuclear. Now, for cons, you know, nuclear is actually a really, really good source of energy, and it's, it's not used enough. Um, one concern is safety. And I'm going to point out that in Canada, we use our own type of nuclear reactors. They're called CANDU reactors. And they are very safe. So you're probably familiar with the, um, the problems that happened in Japan a few years ago when there was earthquakes and they disrupted the nuclear reactors and it caused all sorts of troubles in, in Japan. And it was really serious. Um, they were using an American style of nuclear reactor. Most places in the world do use the American style, which is just far worse. There's, there's nothing better about those reactors than the Canadian style. And it's really actually... Um, a very unfortunate thing that the American style is used all over the world. If it had been a Canadian reactor, what happened wouldn't have happened. It's impossible for Canadian reactors to melt down. Um, we can talk about that more in class if you're interested. Um, can-do reactors are, are great. So safety can be a concern if you're using the wrong kind of nuclear reactor. And the other concern here is radioactive waste. 
radio active waste. So nuclear reactors don't produce a lot of waste, but the waste that they do produce is radioactive. It needs to be disposed of in a very careful way because it can be very bad. And it stays dangerous for thousands of years. Okay, so um, that's a little summary of our resources. Um, you've got four homework questions there. Um, yeah, that's, that's it for this lesson. I know it covered a few different topics, efficiency and uh, different types of energy sources. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good, uh, good rest of your day.